now we are going to look at the arches whose supports are at different levels when the supports of an arch are at different levels we calculate the values of h1 and h2 or l1 and l2 using this relation so l1 is equal to l under root h1 divided by square root of h1 plus square root of h2 or similarly for l2 that is l under root h2 divided by square root of h1 plus h2 so we can either make use of this equation or in other way we can also make use of this ratio to find out the values of l1 l2 or h1 and h2 so many times what happens whenever an, an arch is built on the natural abutments that is it when a natural rock uh, kind of a thing is taken as a support for an arch then what happens the supports of an arch may not be at the same level uh, in that case what happens both the supports will have some vertical distance between each other in that case we need to adopt some different methodology in order to analyze the arch or in order to find out the forces in the arch so the arch with different level look something like this so this is a similar arch what we have seen so far a b c where c being the crown a is the left support and b is the right support so here what we uh, consider is that the right the left half of the arch we consider it the height of the arches h1 previously what we used to do we used to consider any height of the arch uh, that is the maximum height of the arch as h only that is the maximum rise so here uh, two two heights Uh, will be uh, looking at one is the height h1 that is towards the left side of the arch another one is the the height h2 that is towards the right side of the arch right similarly we are also going to look into two lengths of the arch that means l1 is the length of the first arch that is the left of the arch l2 will be the length of the right span of the arch and the total length or total span of the arch will remain as l so this is the notation that we are going to use in order to analyze arches whose supports are at different levels so the equation that we are using to find out the height Uh, for an arch with having different uh, levels of the supports is y1 that is y1 is in particular to this first arch see look at here h1 l1 and similarly the vertical distance y at any point here we are going to use it as y1 so similarly here we are going to use the vertical distance at any point the vertical rise at any point of an arch as y2 so now y1 to calculate y1 we are using this particular formula 4h1x minus 2l1 minus x divided by 2l1 square now this formula is similar to the one we have used in the previous problem but if we are dealing with the first half of the arch you can see here this h has become h1 l has become l1 and here in the denominator also the l has become l1 and y has become y1 similarly in calculating y2 also h this on the this y2 deals with the second portion or the right half of the arch so this means the h2 uh, for the second arch is the height of the arch and l2 is the length of the arch and y2 is the uh, vertical rise at any point in the arch so these are the formula that we are going to use for an arch who supports are at different levels <clears throat> so we will now look at a problem where a 3 hinged parabolic arch is shown in the figure below calculate we are asked to calculate the normal thrust radial shear and bending moment at 15 meters from the point a right so the data is not given so definitely the figure will be given so the given arch looks something like this right so let us observe this arch now this is a arch whose supports are not at the same level so support a looks higher than support b and the height or the distance of the supports from crown are 15 meters and 30 meters respectively so just by looking at this we can say that the vertical distance between the supports a and b is 15 meters that is 30 meters 15 meters 30 minus 15 will be 15 meters and it is loaded by a uniformly distributed load of 40 kN per meter over the left half of the span and 
a point load of 200 kilo newton at the point d which is at a distance of 10 meters from the right support that is b so the data that is given to us is h1 and h2 the data that is unknown to us is l1 and l2 that is the lengths of these particular uh, arches so the total length of the arch is also given that is 60 meters so let us now try to first find out what are this l1 and l2 so in order to find out this l1 and l2 we first need to know how to uh, differentiate the arch when it has the supports at different levels so now this is an arch which is having supports at different levels say h1 and h2 from the crown c so these arches are having supports a and b at the heights h1 and h2 from the crown respectively the lens of these arches are l1 and l2 so the basic assumption that we are going to make is that these arch this arch which is having the supports at different levels is basically a combination of two arches right so the first arch is going to be something like this and the length the total length of this arch will be equal to 2 into l1 so that is half of this arch is l1 and this is 2 l1 full arch is 2 l1 that means whenever you are going to consider this arch fully so this will be the other half right half of this particular arch and now next we are going to consider another arch whose length is 2 l2 that is the total distance from here to here is actually 2 l2 so now if it is 2 l2 then the respective height also is h1 and the respective height of this will be h2 yeah so now what we consider is that whatever is the arch that we are going to get here that is this resultant arch is basically the combination of these two arches that means it is the combination or the combined form of these two arches that is what we are getting so whatever we are looking at here is basically the combination of the first arch and the second arch so that is how is the concept of this arches goes so now let us try to calculate the unknowns in this case so first thing that we are going to do is we are going to write down the figure everywhere <clears throat> so this figure is giving us the idea of the different forces first we are going to find the unknown lens l1 and l2 using this particular relation l1 by l2 is equal to square root of h1 by h2 so this is the formula that we are going to use whenever we have one unknown so whenever a problem with uh, different heights or the supports at different levels is given to you either the height or the length of the arch one of these will be unknown so we are going to make use of this particular relation in order to determine uh, the other value so here h1 and h2 is known we are going to determine l1 and l2 in case l1 and l2 is given to us using the same relation we have to determine what is h1 and h2 so here h1 is 15 meters h2 is 30 meters so we are going to substitute and arrive at a value of 0.707 so now l1 by l2 is basically equal to 0.707 now if we are cross multiplying l1 will be equal to l2 so now we know that the total length of the arch is equal to 60 meters so that means l1 plus l2 will be equal to 60 meters so now i am substituting this in this equation so now what i will be getting is that l1 is equal to 35.15 meters and l2 is equal to 24.85 meters so you should also remember that whenever you are trying to add up these two values you should arrive at this particular value that is 60 meters now, so now if i am adding this up i am arriving at 60 meters so that means whatever are the values of l1 and l2 have calculated will be equal to 60 and they are correct so this is how we calculate the unknowns l1 and l2 next we are again drawing the figure so now we have to find the support reaction so first as usual i will assume a summation of the vertical forces uh, is equal to zero so va plus vb uh, that is the two support reactions at a and b are equal to uh, the udl first 40 multiplied by the half of the distance that is l1 so l1 we have got it as 24.85 plus the point load that is 200 so if i sum it up i'll arrive at 1194 kilonewton so let me put it as equation number one 
Next, I am going to consider the moment, the summation of moments at the point A is equal to 0. So, what I am going to do, I am going to take moments of all the forces. So, all the forces that I have got here, I have got 40 kilo Newton force, 200 kilo Newton force, one vertical force at B and one horizontal force at B. So, this since this horizontal force is at some finite perpendicular distance from A, we also have to consider this horizontal force just like this. Right. So, we have got four forces here. One is the 40 kilo Newton UDL, 200 kilo Newton uh, is the point load, VV is the support reaction, H is the horizontal reaction. So, this is the equation for the moment. So, once I simplify this, I will be getting an equation like this. I will place it as equation number 2. Next, I am going to consider the moment, the summation of moments at the hinge that is at C, the third hinge. Uh, at as equal to 0. So now when I take the moments I will arrive similarly arrive at this particular equation I will place it as equation number 3 right. So now what we can observe here is from equations 2 and 3 what I can see is I have got the unknown VV and H and here also I have got the unknown VV and H. So two equations two unknowns we can actually solve for one of these values. So after solving one of these values if I again substitute it back in VA I can get all the three support reactions. So, after substitution, uh, I am going to get the value of VB as 467.54 kN, VA as 726.46 kN and the value of horizontal reaction H is 380.14 kN. So, the calculation of Y and T. So, the Y is nothing but the central rise at the point where we require the normal thrust and radial shear and also the value of theta we are supposed to find out using the distance where we require the normal thrust and radial shear. So, we in the arch we have got two portions that is portion AC and portion uh, CB. So, now what we are going to do is we are going to find out the uh, rises, rise and the slope at each of these portions uh, because uh, the arch is not symmetrical here. It is a combination of two different arches. So, I am going to divide my arch into two portions. So, for the first portion AC, I am going to use the formula Y is equal to 4HX by 2L1 square multiplied by 2L1 minus X. So, now here we can observe that since it is the portion AC, that is the first portion AC, I am going to use these terms L1 and this is going to be H1. Alright. And also, uh, I am going to substitute the values here for uh, okay, I think this is wrong. So, this is uh, 4 into H1 is 15. So, I am keeping the value X as it is and the value of L1 is 24.85 square. So, now L1 is again 24.85. X value I am going to keep it as it is. So, once I substitute all the values and simplify, I am going to get the equation of rise in terms of X and I differentiate it. I am going to get the equation for tan theta like this. Now, for the second portion, BC, I am similarly going to substitute. The only difference is that this is H1 and here it is H2. This is L1 and here it is L2 because the lengths are L1 and L2 for left and right spans respectively. So, now I am going to substitute. This is not 4 again. Please ignore it. So, now I am again going to substitute all these values here. So, 4 multiplied by the value the H2 uh, height of the second portion of the arch is 30 meters X I am retaining as it is and the value L2 I have got as 35.15 meters I am substituting it accordingly and I am arriving at the equation y is equal to 1.707x minus 0.024x square as the equation of y. I am differentiating it once with respect to x to get the equation for slope tan theta is equal to this much. So, now what I have to do is the reason for me to calculate these two values is basically to find out the value of theta whenever I want to uh, find out the values of normal thrust and radial shear. If at all I am asked to find out normal thrust and radial shear in the first portion in the portion AC, I have to make use of these two equations. If I am asked uh, normal thrust and radial shear in the portion BC, then I have to make use of these two equations. So, here in this question, we are asked to find out the normal thrust and radial shear at 15 meters from A. So, which basically falls within this portion AC. So, we are going to make use of these equations for all further calculations. 
So now horizontal force as usual it is going to be 380.14 kN there is no change and now we are going to find out the value of tan theta. So tan theta this value x we are going to substitute as 15 meters because we, are, we require the normal thrust and radial shear at 15 meters. So this 15 we are going to substitute it here. So we are going to arrive at the value of theta as 25.97 degrees. And now we are going to calculate the shear force V. So the shear force V will be equal to uh, seven, the, the summation of all the vertical forces within this range, within the first 15 meters. So 726 is the support reaction at A and 40 is the UDL and 15 is the distance. So this is the summation of all the vertical forces within the first 15 meters. <coughs> Now we are going to calculate rise at this 15 meters. So this is the, uh, we are going to substitute this in the equation, whatever we have got here. So this is the equation of the rise. So we are going to substitute the rise in this particular equation as 15 meters and get the value Y. So the value Y or the rise of an arch at 15 meters from A is going to be 12.705 meters. So we are also asked to calculate bending moment at 15 meters from A. We are going to find the moments at due to all the forces at 15 meters from A. So 726 is the support reaction, 15 meters is the distance, 40 is the UDL, 15 meters is the total distance of the UDL. The point of action is going to be half of this, that is why it is 15 by 2 and <coughs> A support reaction uh, 380 into 12.075 is equal to 15.67 uh, sorry 1567.22 kilonewtons. So this is the value of bending moment at 15 meters from A. Next we are going to find out the normal thrust uh, whose formula is H cos theta plus V sin theta. We have calculated the value of H. We also know the value of V from here and we also know the value of theta. Once we substitute all the values, we will arrive at a solution of 397.13 kN and a radial shear when you substitute the values of H, V and theta, we are going to arrive at 52.77 kN.